everyone, I'm Lucy. You're watching the Edit With Me Monday show. And I just wanna say, if you've been watching this series for a while, if you've been following along with all the tutorials, then props to you, like give yourself a big pat on the back. Seriously, do it up, like, because you have learned so much already. I was looking at old videos and I was like, wow, we've like, we have covered a lot. Tone curve, HSL, split toning, transform, lens correction, like, We've talked about so much in Lightroom. If you've been following them, you have learned a lot. If you haven't seen the other videos, check out this playlist up there somewhere and uh, and you'll learn them all. But yeah, seriously, like I'm proud of you guys. So today we are talking about the effects panel in Lightroom. You can do some really cool things in this panel with vignetting and grain. So let's get at it. All right, so this tutorial is gonna be pretty quick and easy because there's actually not too much in the effects panel, which is funny. Like when I first went into this panel, I was like, there's gonna be so many effects, what can I do? And then it's like, oh, you can do vignetting and grain. So, so that's it. But still, we can do really cool things with those two features. So this is the photo that we're working with today. I've already gone ahead and done all my other edits to it. If you're curious, this is the completely raw photo. And then this is the photo with all my edits done to it. Now, I knew I was gonna add grain and stuff to it, so I went for this kind of warmer, slightly faded look to kind of, you know, build on that vintage vibe. But first, let's talk about the post-crop vignetting. Now, vignetting is actually a lens distortion that happens on all lenses to varying degrees. So early lenses had a ton of vignetting, and that's the black sort of frame around it. And then newer lenses today, depending what you're using, some have a lot of it some don't have too much but either way it definitely adds a lot of character to your photo so let's take a look at adding that in in post so if I take the amount slider I can either add black vignetting or white vignetting most of the time you're gonna be doing black so normally I would just do a little bit but just to show you right now let's take that all the way again I would never actually do that but for this tutorial, we'll use it to show you. So the midpoint is basically just gonna determine uh, where that sort of vignetting starts in your photo. Do you want it to start like from basically the middle or be pushed out to the edges? Here you can see it's just that black vignetting in the corners there. So normally you'd want, you know, a bit more in there. So with roundness, you can either have your vignette be a circle, more of an oval, or bring it and make it more of a square. And that totally reminds me of like OG Instagram days when you would go through your filters and they would all have that like intense vignette on it. And now we look at it and it's just like super, super cringe. Um, so normally kind of more of the oval look I go for. Depends what you're going for, guys. Feather is, do you want it to just immediately go into that vignette? Usually probably not or have more of a faded look into it. So it's just about how much you want it to fade into the actual vignette. I'm gonna do a little bit there. And then the highlight function is just gonna save some of the highlights in the vignetting if you have them, if you want to. Um, so in this photo you can see down here by the paddle, I can save some of those highlights in it if I would like to. So I'll do that a little bit. Now, the last thing I'll talk about in vignetting is that there's actually three different options here. So highlight priority, color priority, and paint overlay. Highlight priority is actually great for anything where you have lots of highlights all around the edges. So like a sky, um, a bunch of water, anything that has very bright edges, it looks great. For something more like this photo where it's actually dark and lots of colors in the edges, color priority works really well because again, it just saves a bit of those colors in those edges. So I like it for that. And then paint overlay, kind of gives it this like weird grayish look, which might be what you're going for. I basically never use that option though. So I'm gonna pick color overlay for this one. And now that we've learned how to use the vignetting, let's make it look a bit more realistic here. So I'm gonna take down the amount, just have a little bit there, keep the midpoint where it is. I like the kind of oval meets square look, feather it a lot, and then just bring that down. So that looks pretty good. So there's the before and there's the after. Just kind of helps to draw attention onto your subject there. All right, so we totally get vignetting. Now let's jump into the grain feature. So with grain, again, it's pretty straightforward. Gonna zoom in here, get a good look. 
You can choose the amount of grain. Do you just want a little bit? Or do you want a lot? Which again, probably you don't want that much. Uh, let's do a little bit. Size is, are these very little tiny salt grains or are these bigger pieces of grain? So again, depends what you're going for. Roughness is just, is this very uniform, clear grain or is it gonna be sort of very coarse, very rough? Personally, I love the rough look. I think it looks really, really cool. So I usually bring that up quite high. Now, if you're just doing sort of normal photos, you don't necessarily want a vintage look, still adding a little bit of grain does help give a bit of character to your photos. I always usually add it to everything, even if it's just a little bit. Um, but if you're going for that vintage look, definitely like ramp it up. Do not be afraid. So for this photo, I want that over the top vintage look. So I'm gonna do a bunch of grain, up the size and make it look pretty rough. Yeah. So if I turn that off, there's our original photo. And then here it is with that added grain on it. I might've gone a bit too far. Let's, let's tone it back a bit. Okay, that looks good. So there you go. That's how you use the grain feature in Lightroom. Now what I like to do with my vintage vibe photos is I actually like to add another layer of dust and grain onto the photo, like the film scratch look. So if you wanna do that, right click on your photo click edit in Photoshop. All right, so now we have our completely edited photo here in Photoshop. And I actually have my own dust and grain filters that I made completely from scratch. So these are high resolution, they're my own. You can pick them up on Selfie if you want, wink. I can't wink, excuse that, but uh, I do sell them on Selfie if you wanna pick them up. If you don't wanna do that, I have a video about how to make your own. So check that up there somewhere. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, pick one of my dust filters, drop it on top, and you'll see it has this black look to it. So you just put it on and then you go over here and click screen. Takes all the black out of the photo, just leaving you with these little white dusty grainy bits. And I usually bring down the opacity a bit so it's not like so over the top. You can rasterize the layer and erase any spots that you don't really want. And then I usually actually put on like two different filters. So I'm gonna put on this one. It actually has like a crumpled paper vibe. Again, screen. And there we go. Uh, might bring down the opacity a bit. Again, rasterize erase some of the chunks that are a bit too over the top. And there you go, like that is my awesome vintage vibe photo technique. So to get this photo back into Lightroom, we're gonna go file, save, and when it finishes saving, it's actually gonna open that photo back into Lightroom. Now we can't go back and do any other edits to it, but we do still have that other version that we can edit. But now we have this in our Lightroom catalog to kind of look at and compare. So here's the version with the added dust and film scratch look. Here's the version just with the grain on it. Both look great, it really just depends what your style is. All right, so that is how simple it is to use the effects panel in Lightroom. Now I need some help from you guys. I've covered all these main panels, so let me know what tips and tricks you want in Lightroom. What do you want me to teach in the next tutorial? Let me know and I will put it on the list. All right guys, have an awesome week. Find a pool somewhere, chill, take awesome photos, and until next time, peace out.